What's up, YouTube? What's up, J Sweeties? It's your girl, J Sweet, and I am back with another video. As promised, I am going to start my new segment on homeschooling, working with your kids, and getting to know them academically and physically if that's necessary for you a lot of kids out there are um you know special needs they have learning disabilities they have a lot of things going on and it's really really hard right now because not only do we have to listen to all of the crazy stuff that they got going on on the tv about this pandemic but you got to work from home you got to teach from home you got to stay at home is going you know bonkers out there so i hope that these tips that i have will be helpful for you if this is your first time homeschooling if you're deciding to homeschool from now on or even if you want your kids to go back to school um this these tips will be helpful hopefully this will have a major effect on how parents and children are connecting so that when we do go back to school they are able to have a better learning experience because that's what all of this is about so I look forward to seeing your comments on this. Please don't forget to go down there and subscribe to this channel. Hit that notification bell so you can know when my videos come out. And please don't forget to share this video. There are so many people who need to learn about all of the things that I'm going to talk about during this whole segment, series, whatever you want to call it. And I hope that it's beneficial to you. So get ready to start this video. I tried to write out some things. Hopefully you guys can see me, but um, I tried to write out some things to make this a little bit easier. So forgive me if I'm looking over so I can see my little list of things that I wanted to talk about today. But um, one of the biggest things to start out with is organizing your time. Make sure you're planning something for your children to do. And I know that can sound like a lot because you have no idea what it is they're supposed to be learning, what type of curriculum you're supposed to be, you know, teaching from if you're doing your own curriculum or if you're doing from the school's curriculum, sometimes that's really confusing too. So let me give you some tips from working for the school curriculum, working from the school curriculum is make sure that you are looking over that material one week before. So for example, um, if the week is coming up for your um you know preschooler to start working on his um you know three letter words then you should be making sure that you have some type of activity planned to help them do that even if you have to work the first part of the day it doesn't matter don't be overwhelmed with the timing and keeping schedules for them you know compared to when they were at school it's not school is homeschool okay <laughs> so don't hold yourself to a school standard when you don't have that resource available do what you can do if your job requires you to start in the morning time and finish off at a certain time in the afternoon then guess what you get to homeschool in the evenings <laughs> so it's okay it's actually okay just make sure that you have something for them to do during the day and if you don't have someone there helping you with that then make sure it's something that they can do independently not just television not just locked in a room with an ipad it needs to be something that they can actually stay involved in and maybe you'll you know take some breaks every now and again maybe a 15 minute break every hour or so so that you can go in and give them another activity so that's going to be really important is making sure that your time can be separated to accommodate your kiddo okay make sure that you look ahead of their curriculum and know exactly what it is you're going to be facing also, if you have an older kiddo, you can always ask them, you know, what kind of things were you doing at school? What did you enjoy the most at school? And what did you learn the most at school? Tell me what the last thing you learned was and what made it exciting or memorable for you. Those things are helpful in finding out activities that work for your child. Every child is different. So sometimes, you know, they do these things at school and your kid may not actually be learning from that. They may have actually learned better when they did something on the computer or they may have learned better when they were outside doing that activity. It just depends on your child and how they learn. So the benefit is you don't have to do everything that they were doing at school. You only have to do what applies to your child. And that 
is a plus. Trust me, that's a huge plus. So make sure that you're talking with them and figuring out what things really, really work and um, not letting those things that you traditionally did or the things that you thought worked start to create an upset in the household because it's not working for them. Sometimes um, those learning techniques grow old and sometimes they're boring to them or sometimes they just are not effective and there's no sense in creating a whole hysteria over something that can easily be changed just change how you're doing it it's not a big deal okay all right I had to grab my uh, little notepad here my little notepad <laughs> all right so four hours a day is actually a good amount of learning dedicated learning hours a lot of people feel so complex because they feel like, well, my child's at work, at school the whole time that I'm at work and I can't give them that much material. They're not doing that much dedicated learning that whole day, okay? They got breaks, they got lunches, they got off periods where they're the library aid or, you know, they're doing all kind of stuff. Trust me, there are only about four hours of dedicated learning every day. So... Make sure that you hold yourself to only that standard and that's it. And there's no guarantee on what days that needs to be. If you have a really hard working job schedule and it's really difficult for you to fit that in, figure out what days are your busiest and you let those be off days for them. And then you fill those days in with the weekend day or whatever day you may have off. If you have an off day, make sure that you do four hours. Don't try to overdo it just because you have it you know, done a whole lot, just do four hours because that's about the allotted amount of time that you can keep your kids' attention. You don't want to overwork them or overwhelm them and you don't want to overwhelm yourself. You're not used to teaching yet, so don't overdo it. But you do want to make sure that you get at least five days worth of four hours in so that they can be learning on a scale that can be memorable for them in the long term. Make sure that they're getting just enough physical exercise and just enough quiet time. Quiet time is important. It's a moment where our brain gets a chance to kind of absorb everything that we've been learning, everything that we've been doing, and get used to a new schedule. If you have uh, children with autism like myself, sometimes it's important to take many breaks throughout the day. So four hours of learning don't have to be all together. They can be one hour in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, one hour before bed, or however you need to put that together. Um, but it needs to be enough rest time in order for the brain to kind of circulate what's happening now, that there's a change in routine and that it's okay. You know, I'm learning still. I'm still understanding what's going on. And you want that time for yourself and for your child. The biggest thing about teaching at home is keeping it interesting because, I mean, you're at home. Some of you are going through this too. Like you're at home and there's so many different distractions. When you were at work, all you have was your computer, your cubicle, your phone, and the homegirl next to you that you might slip a note to every now and again or reach up over there and tell a girl they just made some coffee and it's, oh, it's so nasty. I don't know. Whatever it is that, you know, kept you in that work environment may not be at home the same way so continue that thought with your kiddos it's pretty difficult sometimes to learn in an environment where you typically are just having fun or watching tv or hanging out with your family members or having some friends over you can't stop your mind sometimes from thinking about those things so it's really really important that you create activities that keep their interest and keep their learning material going in their head as well. Um, you can always look for ideas like that on YouTube. I mean, you know, YouTube is very helpful on doing stuff like that. Um, look at some, you know, nature videos. If you're learning about geograph uh, geography, um, if you're learning about, you know, animals, if you're learning about whatever it doesn't matter you can do virtual youtube tours of museums of zoos parks anything like that so there's always material out there you just have to get out there and look at it and that's another added plus of looking ahead so if you look ahead the week ahead and figure out okay this is what the curriculum says for them to learn 
then you want to come up with ideas that will keep them interested and not just, you know, staring at the computer for the four hours that they're doing it for the day and then done. You know, now they're looking at you like I'm bored. You know, give them some activities to do in between. If you have older kiddos, you know, you know what level they're on. If they can look at those videos and write down some bullet points on things that they learn and then come back to you later on, maybe while you're cooking dinner, to talk to you about it. So that can be really helpful. You can learn, you know, about how they're comprehending things and their retention on holding on to that information is really important. So that's a tip for the resources. If you are homeschooling specifically and you don't plan on going back to school or even if you do, you can go to the Texas Homeschool Coalition website or there's probably one in your area if you are in a different place in the world, then leave me a comment down there or send me an email and I'll help you find out what that is for your specific state or country. Um, but there's always help on those websites to help you with resources for curriculums, resources for activities, you know, at home activities, including art, um, you know, things that you can find on the web, on the TV, that you can watch as a family maybe and do activities outside. Um, never forget that, you know, science is a part of cooking. It's a part of planting. Um, so that's beneficial as well. Even if you're in an apartment like me, um, we can get, you know, pottery, which we've started. Uh, and I'll be showing you guys some of this stuff on the next video of what we've actually started to do so that they can be helpful to kind of put them in your mind and let you have some ideas. But um, there's always resources online for you to find more activities that can be hands-on where you can teach them and keep up with that curriculum. And um, if you've decided to completely homeschool, it's very important that you have some type of curriculum to follow. So um, during the day, we actually do online curriculum, which includes uh, Adventure Academy. It's very intuitive. It helps them out a lot with individual um, lessons. And then we take from those lessons and we take those into our physical learning or teaching time. And I use different props and things like that to continue that learning. And then we take it outside. We find different ways to study the weather. We find different ways to study the earth. And um, it's really, really interesting once you start getting into it. But I'm one of those people who don't have an at-home job right now. So if that's not you, don't feel bad about not being able to do that on a daily basis. It's actually okay. And I have some ideas that I'm going to share with you if you don't have that so that you can kind of plan out your time and make sure that you get it in at least once a week but you can still complete the work that you have to complete to take care of your family. Don't be too hard on yourself. This is not school, you guys. Make up your own time span, make up your own time limits. You know what your schedule is like, you know what your kids are like, and if you don't, this is a great time to learn. Make sure that you are taking applicable breaks. Nobody can work four hours straight just by itself and be okay. So make sure that you are giving your kiddos a break every 30, 45 minutes for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, giving their little brains a break, giving them a little snack break, whatever it is. Um, and then make sure you have uh, activities that are planned for them if you're working so that they can keep themselves busy and quiet while you're trying to complete your work. <laughs> As you can hear in the background, um, they are just starting to make a little bit of noise, but they're busy because they have activities. So that's an important thing to do, okay? Have those things situated for them so that they can find them on their own. But, so I separate my learning days into two different types of days. And this is just my idea. You can go with it or create something your own. Um, but my first learning day is one half of an hour, one half hours of online learning with 10 minute breaks every 30 minutes um, so that's our academic um, activity website that we use it's called adventure academy there's abc mouse there's a whole lot of different ones so whichever one works specifically for your child and the level that they're on you can choose um, i think adventure academy has like 45 dollars for one year right now which is amazing so and you can put up to three kids on there so that's really helpful 
keep that in mind. Even if they aren't in school still, that's something that can keep them learning throughout the day while you don't have time to work directly with them on their school curriculum. Um, one and a half hour of hands-on learning. Okay, and again, there's no time periods on here. I didn't put 9.30 to whatever. It doesn't matter when you get a chance to do this. Just make sure that you fit this into your day. That's all this means. So you get to decide how you want to do this and when you want to do this. And then when you put it together, just stick to it so that they can become used to the routine that happens at home. So one and a half hours of hands-on learning. That's when I take a little bit from here and I take that into here and I teach them with some props maybe, with some counting cubes or whatever it is that you're working on. And then one hour of outdoor learning activities. So the other day we studied weather, we studied the wind, and we went to fly kites. You know, so it, it can be any type of fun activity that you do with your kids. And it can be fun for you too. You know, don't let everything be upsetting. It can really be difficult to get through the day like that. So if you're finding yourself running into issues where you get upset with your kids, take a break. Okay? You both need a break. Just back away from it because it ain't going to get any better if you sit there and do all of that. Trust me, <laughs> it's not going to get any better. You just need to learn how they learn. Everybody's different learners. Just because they're your kids does not mean they learn like you do. So it's going to be really important for you to take those times. And sometimes outdoor time is the best time to get to where you can get happy again, you can get excited again, you can come in, take a wash off, take a snack, and then come back to the learning again and see if you can revisit it in a different way. My day two is two hours of online learning with 10 minute breaks every 30 minutes, and then one hour of hands-on learning, and one hour of um, desired activity. So basically, I have a list of activities that they can choose from it can be their choice if they're old enough to do that let it be their choice um even if they're not when they're younger they they know how to decide and that's a good learning tool to help them learn to make decisions so um have some activities already lined out and i'm going to show you mine in just a minute um of what they can choose to do if you have a special needs kiddo like mine then you can choose, you know, 30 minutes of speech time, OT time, occupational therapy, or ABA time, the applied behavioral um, therapy uh, in, in those segments, and then 30 minutes or even an hour of something else that they really want to do, like read or draw or whatever that might be. So um, these are typically the days when I have specific things like today, when I need to record a video. <laughs> or if I was working from home, I would be doing mostly these days. And then on my off days, I would be doing these. So it just kind of depends on what your schedule is like and, you know, what type of resources you have available to you and to your child while you're busy as to how you will write this out. But this is just how mine looks. And I only had the need for these two different days because I spend my video recording days i do my editing as well so these will be my busiest days and then when i have all the time to give them in the world then we do this we go outside we have activity day whatever so this is how my days look so that's my planning okay so this is just an idea of how i write those days out now this is a pretty large um Pretty large calendar you can use the calendar on your phone whatever's you know most viable for you doesn't really matter um, whatever works best but I use this big one because it's something that we all can look at so I chose to go ahead and use March because it was not written on I just got this calendar not long ago so um, I chose to do this just as a mock so you guys can look and see I have learning day two learning day one and I choose whichever days I need those days to be on. And then after that, I'll put like relax or go outdoors or whatever. And the outdoors is usually on the day ones when I have all the time in the world to do whatever we need to do. And on the day twos, I'll put relax and have one hour of activity. So I put one hour activity on each one of these because even after coming in from the outdoor um, activity, whatever that may have been, um, sometimes they still need to come back in and have an hour of art and then 
reading. Um, so 30 minutes of art, 30 minutes of reading or something like that. Or they may actually have a speech day that day, um, OT day that day. So that takes out of the one hour activity time. So, um, and again, there's no times on here. If you see, I only put that on there so that we can know what day it is and what we'll be doing. But I didn't choose a time because the time is up to us. And it just depends, you know, on our outdoor activity day, it might be raining. So then we have a list of activities, which will be over here, as to what we can do on those rainy days. And so um, it can be anything from reading to watching a museum tour, um, speech, baking, OT therapy, um, counting at the store. If you go into the grocery store, make sure that you're taking some tools to help them count up the cost. So everything that you pick up, you have them look at the price tag and they're adding those things to see how much money we're actually gonna be spending at the store. Or maybe just choosing their favorite things and making sure that they're keeping up with how much that costs and how much money is gonna be required to take care of it and actually get to take it home. So that's a big plus. Those are always learning things that you can do that's everyday activity and they need to be learning these things. So it's really important. Um, and then of course, outdoor planting is another thing that I mentioned. Um, you can study geography off of that because you know it depends on where you are as to how you will plant. Um, if you're in a sandy place, it's gonna be really important for you to get enriched soil, right? So you can do a lot of study on how all of that works. That's science, that's chemistry, that's a whole lot of different things. So um, look up some resources on how you can teach whatever you're working on during that time. And then art and puzzles. Never underestimate the power of puzzles. If you have more than one kid in different you know, grades and things like that, sit them down with a thousand piece puzzle and let it fly. <laughs> Trust me, it works. Don't ever underestimate the power of a puzzle. And then games, of course. Um, if you have older kids and younger kids all in the same house, then you know, give them an opportunity to teach each other. Teach each other the games. Teach each other you know, how to put together the puzzles. Um, teach each other different things about art. Maybe you have a child that's older that really, really likes to read then they can read with them. Um, maybe they can put together a play of something that they read. Um, you know, things like that are always fun and it keeps them engaged. And uh, you know, if you're working and you got an older kiddo, say, hey, I want you to go and read them this book and then I want you to be the director for the day. I want you to put them together as characters and I want you to reenact a piece of this book with them and have them dress up and have them um, you know recite some lines whatever you can get them to do and then they can rehearse that for the majority of the day and then let them take turns doing that so it doesn't just have to be the older person let the younger one you know be the director too if you feel they have the capacity to do that it can be really fun and then you know right before dinner hey they have a play that they want to do for us you guys everybody sit down daddy welcome home have a seat, I'm gonna get you a drink and we're gonna sit here and watch them do their thing because they've been spending all day on this. That can be amazing. Those are really, really good activity tips to help. So I hope that that is beneficial for you guys. All right, Jay, sweeties. So I hope that those tips are beneficial for you all. Please don't forget to leave down in the comments what you thought about this video. Um, y'all know that I love to vlog, so I had to pick my camera up because that just sitting still, it ain't working for me. It's just not working for me. So I hope that that was helpful. And if it was, please let me know. If it wasn't, let me know also because I would love to change it into whatever it needs to be for you. It's pretty noisy out here. I thought maybe I'd come out here and get some sunlight, but it ain't working that great. So I'm going to go ahead and end off this video. Do not forget to go down below and subscribe to this channel. Hit that notification bell. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And don't forget to share this video, like this video, and I will see you guys on the next one. I love you. Bye.